Commissioner Elrod? Present. Commissioner Brockenstead? Here. Commissioner Coronado? Here. Commissioner Newfinke? Here. Commissioner Samuelson? Here. Commissioner Metcalf? Commissioner Ranville? Commissioner Gallagher? Here. Commissioner Bagnell? Here. We have a quorum. And Jenny's in the um, bicycle meeting. So she should be here any second. Okay. Right there. All right, any changes to the agenda? No? Seeing none, let's move to the approval of minutes and look at the March 14, 2011 minutes. And since this was so long ago, we can approve this um, by acclamation, which means that if anybody has any objections, um, then it won't be approved, but if there's seeing no objections, then it will be approved, right? So any objections? Any changes? A motion to approve the minutes of March 14th. Okay. Any objections? Any second? Second. Okay. So then... Why don't we just show by hands everybody who approves of minutes? Okay, that is unanimous. Those March 14th minutes are approved. We're on the April 11th minutes. And we'll actually formally vote on these. Any comments? Tony? Yeah, I, I was here and I'm not listed as being here. And Karina was absent at that meeting, so we can add her to those absent. And I had a general comment under general business, page two, line 16. We actually had a formal motion to suspend Robert Rules of Order using um, the existing Planning Commission's normal process to comply with Colorado Open Meetings Act. So I was hoping we can put the actual vote in the minutes. It was seven to zero. Uh, Steve uh, Bakkenstadt made the motion, Dave seconded. If you must go. We actually had a formal motion. I requested a vote to be taken to suspend Robert's rules to vote using the Planning Commission's normal process to be able to comply with the Colorado Open Meetings Act. And Commissioner Bakkenstadt motioned and Commissioner Metcalf seconded. <coughs> so that was an actual formal vote. Do you guys agree? Mm -hmm. To keep it in. Yeah. Okay. And those were my only comments. Did you pick up? Um, oh, Chair. Chair Metcalf. Should have been Chair Newfinky. Or Commissioner. Or, on line 14, 15. Okay, any other comments? Make a motion to approve with the um, uh, comments that uh, Commissioner Newfinky just um, gave us. We have a second. Second. Kurt, second. So, all those in favor? Karina. And it's unanimously approved. All right, that takes us to. public hearings, and it's the Littleton Recreation Center Plan Development Plan Amendment Number 1, a case number APD 11-001, and it's an amendment to the Rec Center's PD plan to reduce the parking requirements for the Buck Center. So 
Um, do we have, we have a Jan to do a staff report? Good evening. Good evening, Planning Commission. Um, sorry. First of all, I'd like to enter in the uh, exhibits for the record. <clears throat> The Exhibit A, which is the City Staff Report and Attachments. Exhibit B, the Application and Attachments. Exhibit C, the Area Reference Map. Exhibit D, the City Comp Plan. And the Progress Park Neighborhood Plan by reference. Exhibit E, the City Zoning Ordinance by reference. Exhibit F, the Official Zoning Maps by reference. Exhibit G, the Proof of Posting. Exhibit H, the Proof of Publication. And Exhibit I, the Public Hearing Roster. To, uh, tonight, the city staff is uh, presenting to you a case that we've initiated. Um, it's an amendment to the Littleton Recreation Center PD plan, uh, which is basically known to everybody as the Buck Center Rec Buck Recreation Center. Um, this uh, PD plan is to reduce the parking requirements for the center, at, which is located at 2004 West Powers Avenue. Um, if approved, the requirement for the center to provide 65 off-site parking spaces will be eliminated. And another component to the amendment was to um, modify the specific requirements for on-site and on-street parking spaces to reflect the current conditions that were built in uh, 2003. <clears throat> in front of you is a, a area reference map. The uh, property that's hatched is the uh, property that uh, the Buck Rec Center is um, located on. Uh, this is located north of the municipal courthouse. And it was constructed in 2003. The property is owned by the City of Littleton and leased by South Suburban Park and Recreation District. Um, the site was originally um, a former county jail and was rezoned in um, 2003 to plan development commercial to allow the development of um, the demo of the jail and the redevelopment of the recreation center. The city also owns uh, Littleton Municipal Courthouse property and formal, formerly owned um, 2009 West Littleton Boulevard, which has an office building on it. The uh, properties to the north of the site is, are zoned R3, um, and north of the site is a vacant parcel. Um, what I might do is, uh, oh, this will show up on here very well. Easier to see. Um, the properties to the north of the site is uh, the Art Depot. Um, a vacant land that's owned by this uh, Colorado State Land Board, and then to the uh, east of that is um, elementary, nor it was formerly the North Elementary School. It's a village charter school now that's owned by Littleton Public Schools. To the east of um, the site is zoned R3, and that's all single family residential. To the south of the site is the courthouse and this uh, office building that we later call the Sternberg Building. And those properties are zoned B2 and T. Um, and that was actually the zoning that the rec center property originally was. To the west is the railroad right away, and that um, has no zoning on it. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, um, the original PD plan was approved in 2003 to allow the development of the recreation center. The uh, construction of it um, was initially uh, thought out to be in two phases. Uh, the first phase being the main recreation center and the community center that's up here. And then the gymnasium, which is located here, was phase two of the, of the uh, construction. Um, back uh, in 2003, when the PD plan was developed and approved, it, it required 80 on-site spaces and 67 on-street spaces. Um, the on-site spaces basically are in this parking lot here, and the on-street spaces are in this on court place, which you know essentially serves a, as a parking lot for the courthouse and the rec center now. Um, in addition to um, these 147 spaces, there were 20 parking spaces down in this part of court place that were 
meant to be shared with the courthouse since the courthouse was closed for several hours when the rec center was open. At the time that phase two is constructed, which is the gymnasium, um, there were 25 parking spaces approved in this area, so those needed to be replaced once this was built. And so the PD plan um, at uh, time of phase two uh, basically called out that the uh, Park, the 25 spaces would be replaced with um, off-site parking. And in addition to that, 40 more spaces would be added off-site to uh, provide for overflow parking. And that's what was um, all thought out in 2003. <clears throat> As I mentioned in my staff report, our code doesn't have a parking requirement for a recreation center. So um, during the review in 2003, uh, South Suburban provided us with some consultant information that um, has recommended certain parking ratios for a facility like this, and that's how all that parking back in 2003 had been calculated with anticipation of, of the needs for this project. <clears throat> um, at the time phase two was built, um, the off-site spaces were then uh, provided by 23 spaces located on the 2009 West Littleton Boulevard, which is known as the Sternberg property. And the other 42 off-site parking spaces were to be um, shared over at uh, the, the village school. <clears throat> um, since that, um, however, uh, as I was informed by South Suburban staff, um, what had transpired over the years was, although they had the agreement with uh, the elementary school to park there, they found that a lot of their patrons and staff kept parking on the vacant property that the state land board um, owns because it was just a little bit closer. <laughs> so, so for the last you know eight years, that's kind of how things have been operating. Um, recently, the city council sold the Sternberg property to a private party that um, has chosen to uh, re renovate the interior of it and do some renovations on the outside and basically, I believe, lease it out for office space. Uh, when the when the city council did that, they did amend their ground lease with South Suburban to remove these 23 spaces um, as a right for the rec center to use. Um, the spaces really weren't being used by the rec center much anyway, because the, the way they're, if you've been out there, the, where they're located, they're really not convenient to the front door of the rec center. They're, you kind of have to go in through the back way, and they found that they weren't really using those spaces anyway. So... Um, so anyway, uh, City Council amended their lease agreement with South Suburban to remove those 23 spaces. However, um, the requirement still is on the PD plan, which um, creates an encumbrance on, on that property so that the owner now of the Sternberg property really has not a full right to use the parking spaces on his property. Um, and in looking at the amendment to, rem to remove the requirement to provide the 23 off-site spaces, staff um, had recommended to go ahead and just uh, or recommended the removal of all the 65 off-site parking spaces instead of just the 23. Um, first of all, we, th we thought it was a good idea because um, it is uncommon for PD plan to have an off-site parking requirement and it's, it's somewhat difficult to actually enforce. Um, the uh, South Suburban staff had indicated to us that from what their operations reflect and the amount of parking that's used and the days that it's used, um, it didn't appear that, you know, 65 off-site spaces were actually really necessary at all the time. And um, we also felt that uh, basically South Suburban has to provide parking for their patrons um, regardless of whether there's really a requirement on the PD plan or not. So we just felt it might just, just clean up the language of the PD plan and no longer actually have that requirement on there. But, um, however, South Suburban, you know, still has to provide parking for their patrons. <clears throat> One of the other, uh, uh, and then also, at, and looking in this uh, amendment, discovered that um, some modifications that occurred with the on-site parking from when it was constructed to what actually was shown on the uh, PD plan and the site plan at the time that was approved after that. And what had basically happened, um, they, had, um, they had their handicap parking all up here in this area. And when you have the senior facility down here and the health clinic facility, that didn't really make a lot of sense. So they had 
ended up moving and restriping their handicap spaces down to this area here. So that caused some modification in the parking lot right here and, and changed some of the numbers. And then um, because they did lose some regular spaces in this area, they were able to find and stripe some additional spaces in the court place parking to, to accommodate that and make up for that. In fact, they actually came up with a few more. So that had happened back um, in, uh, in 2003 when the property had been constructed. And I know all these parking numbers and counts are really confusing, and I've, I've looked at it and looked at it and looked at it again, and it is. It's very confusing. So I, so I hoped I'd helped a little bit, and I did provide a little summary chart in my staff report trying to show you kind of the comparison on how it all evolved and, and so you could kind of see the comparison this way because it, it's very confusing when you're looking through PD plans, site plans, and, and previous staff reports and all, and, and what's out there now. So I tried to provide that. So as part of this amendment, the staff also thought it was prudent to just go ahead and kind of clean up the language on the PD plan to reflect the actual parking that's been constructed out there and how it's working. <clears throat> the, uh, now, I, under conflicts and complications, I had uh, kind of uh, noted... Um, <coughs> Like I just, I actually already explained the fact that we didn't have specific parking requirements and that's therefore the uh, parking requirements were established were based on anticipated needs by a consultant that South Suburban had at the time. Um, however, um, they've, they've indicated that the parking needs of the facility during the last eight years have proven to be less. And um, so, you know, we, we felt it was uh, prudent to remove the requirement from the PD plan to remove the current encumbrance on the Sternberg property so that that could be utilized in a more economical manner. Um, and I know the State Land Board brought up some comments about, um, you know, that someday they may dispose of the property and they couldn't guarantee or commit to any kind of availability of that site for parking as it's being used now. And that's true. And, um, you know, so at some time, if they do dispose of the property and it's not acquired for parking for this site, South Suburban um, will need to uh, somehow find uh, parking for their patrons. Um, I did talk with uh, Brett Collins at South Suburban this afternoon, anticipating questions like, well, what would South Suburban do? And he indicated to me that with their facilities, when they find they have parking issues like this, and it happens mostly with their parks, um, they, they basically deal with their parking issues by um, revising their scheduling on their programs so they don't have, you know, conflicting heavy users at the same time at their facilities, and that has seemed to work pretty well, he indicated. So um, there were two things. He, he felt that they could accommodate things by, by reviewing the program schedules there at the center if that was necessary. The other thing um, he indicated was that they could revisit that 2003 uh, parking agreement with um, LPS um, regarding the Littleton or the Village School property again. I, they had the agreement you know, it never seemed to be used because everybody was parking on that other piece that's next to it. But um, he said that's another option they could do is just revisit that arrangement with the school then. Um, and in my staff report, I did uh, list city code requirements and the criteria that uh, Planning Commission and City Council review plan development plans. And these are the same criteria that were used in approving the plan originally in 2003. Um, and so I... I noted in here basically um, the same uh, criteria and how they were met with the approved PD plan and that staff didn't feel that they were being uh, changed by this proposal. In fact, um, we felt that uh, the uh, freeing the encumbrance off of the commercial property was um, actually more beneficial in meeting the comp plan and, and creating an economically viable piece of property again. Um, and in my conclusion recommendation, I just, as I said, Planning Commission and City Council in 2003 had found that this above all this criteria had been met, justifying the original approval of the PD plan in 2003, and that the uh, proposed amendment to remove the off-site parking requirement for the PD plan will not change the manner in which the recreation center is operated since its opening in 2003. And in the future, if the State Land Board property develops and is no longer available for parking, um, the uh, other parking arrangements will need to be made, uh, obtained for the center's patrons, regardless if there's actually a written requirement on the PD plan. And um, and and one and also uh, one thing I did, would like to note is that the State Land Board property is zoned R3, that is single-family residential. 
is um, to be rezoned to something other than R3 is is unlikely because of the size of it. It's it's too small. It's not. It's less than 180,000 square feet. So our code actually doesn't allow a spot zoning like that. So um, parking, commercial parking, is actually permitted on R3 zoned property under conditional use uh, approval by the Planning Commission. So I just thought I'd point that out to you. And in any way, staff is recommending approval of this proposed amendment. And happy to answer questions if I can for you or clarify anything. Any questions? <clears throat> Craig? Um, are you aware of any um, concerns by the neighborhood about parking? I mean, it's right adjacent to a residential neighborhood, mm -hmm. I imagine, if the overflow parking is full or if it, the, the overflow parking will be on the neighborhood streets right. adjacent. I, um, now, I don't know who this gentleman is in the audience, so he may be a neighbor. Are you? <laughs> I'm uh, actually a facility manager in Delta. Oh, okay, okay. Well, you know, I haven't, um, I haven't heard from anybody, and I, in the last several years since they've opened, I haven't been aware of any complaints. And I know there's permit parking on Spotswood Street that's because of the RTD, you know, to make sure they don't park in there. But I haven't, I haven't heard any complaints. So um, well, the state land board property is actually closer to the center, I think, than you wouldn't want to walk too far to a rec center. You know, that might. <laughs> 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 but no, I haven't heard any complaints in these years, so. Does the state land board have any issues with liability of people parking over there and coming across? You know, I don't know. I I didn't get that. I didn't get that in, information from the woman that um, I sent the referral to. Um, it's been going agreement? on for a long time. Pardon? Specific agreement between the land board and there? Because I know when I drove by there, I did drive by the site. Uh -huh. Noticed that. South Suburban had a truck parked on there too, one of their own commercial vehicles. Uh -huh. No, I'm not, not aware that there is any. Um, South Suburban staff has indicated that there's no official agreement with them. Jan, can you say a little bit more about the agreement with um, the, the school, the Littleton Village, I think it's called? Mm -hmm. And so they said that they had an agreement in place. Do you know a little bit of the details of what that agreement is and how it's potentially changed now? You know, um, the pro unfortunately, the planner, Melissa uh, Reese Thacker, that works for the uh, South Suburban and did this PD plan, she's, she's very aware of that agreement. And she was sick today. She was going to be at the meeting tonight and wasn't able to come. And talking to Brett Collins is one of those things. He couldn't find the file that she's got that in. It was unfortunately one of those things. And I'm sure um, I could get that from her. Um, but um, I wasn't able to get a copy of it from her today, and but she, you know, she verified that there there is an agreement in place. They did that in 2003. It's just, you know, it never was used because the everybody parked on the other property all the time. So, and I didn't get a letter back from uh, the school district when I did the referrals out. So, so. Do you know how many places are at the the village school? Um, that I do not know. I do not know that. It said here that it was 42 off-site parking to be accommodated by the village school. Yeah, that's in 2003. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that. I don't know how many all parking spaces they have at village school, but it was 42 that they had. That they had, they had leased. Yeah, allotted or whatever for them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other questions, Dave? Just a couple, largely dealing with numbers. If I'm reading the chart that you provided properly, Jan, on page three. What you're essentially saying is under the approved PD plan for phase one, including the 20 shared spaces at the courthouse, there would have been a total of 167 spaces. That was pending phase two development of the gymnasium. Correct. With phase two, the PD plan called for a total of 207 spaces, including the 20 shared on court place. What we're now calling for is 145. That's even less than what we had with phase one. If I'm reading the evaluation of the, of the situation correctly, you're saying that the lot fills up most days, weekdays between 9 and 1.30, then you typically have 20 or 30 spaces over or cars over on the uh, state land board property, plus a number more uh, during Thursday at the special program. Um, but you're saying essentially with this, state land board specifically is saying we shouldn't expect that the property will always be available 
even though staff is uncertain about LPS's allowance or continued allowance of the, of the use of their lot for overflow of parking, we got no comments back from Littleton Public Schools. So I guess what we're essentially saying is even though the lot is filled up and there are overflow spaces needed, we don't see any need to maintain provision for those overflow spaces in the revised and the amended PD plan. Now, how many people or how, how far people have to walk from their parking place to get to the Buck Center is, is an issue for the Buck Center and, and South Suburban to deal with. That's, that's not in our purview any more than it is for us to determine whether patrons for a restaurant or a store have to walk a certain distance. What is of our, should be of concern for, for us is what happens when that overflow parking starts spilling out into the residential area. And so my question is, if we remove any requirement for overflow parking, whatever, from this PD, then what we're just depending on the city to voluntarily hold itself accountable if that overflow parking starts spilling into the residential area to find some other place to accommodate overflow parking. I mean, I'm afraid if we approve this the way it's stated, there'll be no requirement for the city we won't be holding its, their feet to the fire to, um, to provide for future um, or, or even take advantage of future opportunities for overflow parking. If the state land board, for example, would say, we're willing to sell a piece of that property so you have your overflow parking, if we take this 65 overflow spaces out of the PD through this amendment, the city has no incentive to do anything about it. They can just wave it off and say, we're fine. And I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that. I, I'm also a little concerned about the comment that it's extremely difficult for the city to enforce off-site parking requirements. Has anybody discussed that with Jose's or Merle's? Because they have off-site parking requirements. Presumably the city enforces those. I, I'm just curious. It, it sounds like the city's painted itself into a corner and we're trying to find a reasonable way out of this. And I have no problem with that as long as the reasonable doesn't start, doesn't encroach into unreasonable clogging of parking in the residential areas. And I want some assurance that's not going to happen. Any comments? I have a couple additional questions and, and perhaps they might be better answered by the gentleman who manages the Buck Center. I hate to put you on the spot, but um, uh, just let me ask him first and then we'll see. Um, one is my experience with park rec centers is that they have unique um, parking demands. They have high peaks and low lows and um, and very often they're over parked, but when, they're, when there is a peak demand, uh, parking can be real, a real challenge. Um, I wonder how um, the city applies uh, per thousand number of parkings to a place like, say, 24 Hour Fitness down at the Riverside Center. Was that was there a quantity on that? Was it like four per thousand, or was that because it's a mixed use well, that development? Was, that's or? because it was a mixed use. So it was that was actually parked like a shopping center. Okay. Yeah, right. that was a mixed use. Yeah. And um, so I was trying to look at the numbers. Yeah. Like 3.43 was what it was. Uh, well, apparently. yeah, the 3.43 per thousand was roughly about what the consultant um, in 2003 had mm. come up with. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, and the 24-hour fitness was based on the shopping center okay. parking. The 2.92 to me does feel low, that, and that's the proposed, mm -hmm. um, you know, based on other And that places. ratio does not include, um, I don't believe, that ratio does not include the 20 spaces that are shared with the courthouse. Just for clarification. Probably closer to three than it, with the. Probably, with but the, the uh, but the 3.43 didn't include the 20 shared spaces either. So just for comparison. Okay, mm -hmm. and the other half of my question is the the um, <coughs> Buck Center was uh, obviously designed for a certain capacity, and the last couple of years have been an economic downturn, um, where fitness clubs, I think, in general, have not seen a full subscription. I wonder if. You know, a lot of a lot of the observations of being of not requiring the parking are based on actual conditions. Is it is the Buck Center fully subscribed? Is does it anticipate uh, additional expansion or programs as things get better? That probably is a question for him. <laughs> <laughs> Can you 
Come down to the microphone, please. And if you could state your name for the record. Mike Keen, the facility manager at the Buck Recreation Center. And to answer your question, I mean, sure, as a business, we would love to increase our programming and the, the number of patrons utilizing the building in the future. How that happens um, would, as Brett stated, as we notice if the lot is filling up at certain times of the day, we try to renegotiate when we're offering those programs. Um, with the Buck Recreation Center, is built as a multi-generational facility, allowing throughout the day that you can really see that transition from seniors to families throughout that day, and that would just be changing some of that programming to make sure that we're utilizing our, our spaces the best that we can. Does the Buck Center provide a shuttle for we do not at this time. No. Okay. Jenny? I have a question on the, the bicycle parking. And do you think that the bicycle parking is adequate for the rec center at this time? From what I've seen at this time, yes. From what you've seen. Because I and, and anticipating that there's the, uh, the city ditch trail that's uh, being planned to be constructed this year. Is there any um, expectation to increase your bicycle parking once that's if we see the need for it, and I really hope we do see the need for it, to me that's a great way to get to the rec center is, is to come on bike. When you had the shared spaces with the Sternberg property, were those used at all? Do you know what percentage were used? Um, I would say probably 10 of those 23 were used, and that was mostly by staff. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what about the shared spaces with the court? Is that going to uh, inconvenience, Jan, I think this one's for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going to inconvenience the people who normally park in, in those spots? Um, well, the um, courthouse isn't open all the hours that the, the rec center are. So, I mean, they've been doing that for some time. So, I'm uh, I mean, guessing I not. <clears throat> city attorney, et cetera. And, um, there's a actual well, yeah, they still have dedicated so there and they're also still they've still got designated parking on the um, east side of the courthouse It's still the courthouse, but aren't those part of the 23 spaces no. that are No, uh -uh. The, the it's kind of funny this little line right here These spaces right here are still on the city-owned property and will still be for the courthouse and the 23 spaces are well, actually, it's kind of there. There's fifth, there's 15 spaces in this island here, and then there's going to be additional ones created along this area to uh, make up the 23 total for what this office building will need. And so, then, so, so yeah. the, the plan that you gave us, the big plan that you gave us, <coughs> where I counted 23 parking mm -hmm. places, eight of them for the alongside the court. Those are going to stay as. Dedicated to the court. Right. Those eight. And you're going to add eight more spots into the, the property in there? Is yeah. That, is that yeah. Good? okay? Yeah. So it's to the east of the existing spaces? Yes. I, I think I think Charlie was going to do like parallel spaces or something. Yeah, they're restriping to um, add some and then they're doing. Here. See that line right where you were pointing, Jan? That they're like supposed right to be here. like five going in along there that are parallel parking type spaces and then the city's entered into you know this is actually a public alley right here and then the city's entered into cross access easement agreements right. to access the the, the shared spaces. spaces are out to the west of the, the courthouse 20, yeah the 20 shared spaces are out here in this area of the courthouse so that's, right. that's used mostly by people that are coming to visit the courthouse yeah and, and the courthouse peak hours are really just wednesday at one <coughs> that's when they do traffic arraignments so you know your your peak over there of when you're crowded is going to be driving. is going to be limited to. Are, when are there any out. signs in those uh, those shared spaces, um, the 20 shared spaces that say for courthouse use during these hours? Is there any limitations like that or any signage? I don't think so. I don't, I don't believe there is. I think I it's all just three hour is the limit, mm -hmm. and it applies all the way up court place. Steve, is the Sternberg? Uh, Property uh, plotted into three plots. It's yeah, I think it. I think it's three long, skinny, old lots, from Littleton Heights. <clears throat> I think it is. I think it's, it's, it's it's like three. It's like three, and then the east 15 feet of another one. It's it's got a very funky <laughs> legal description. 
the legal description for the Sternberg property. <clears throat> Actually, I could find that for you in my file if you'd like. Does, it, does the 23 uh, spaces meet the requirement that they need there? Is that, is that how you came up with the yeah. 23? Yeah, yeah. Kurt? I just have a hard time seeing where they can get that additional eight spaces in that alleyway. It's not all in the alley. I want to say maybe three of them are in the alley and the rest. There, there's, yeah, there's some. Or, or something about restriping the lot to accommodate. Well, I think it's along the north side of the alley is where those those parallel spaces are going to get striped in. <coughs> but it'll create 23 spaces. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? I, I'm, my guess is city staff has racked its brain over the last several weeks to try and figure out alternatives to this. Right now, the only alternatives seem to be, other than amending the PD, use continued use for overflow parking on the village school site or on state land board site. Are there any other possibilities even remotely to be considered? Not that I'm aware of, yeah. Not that I'm aware of. <clears throat> Along that line, does Depot Arts Center have any parking? And are they, is there parking on the state land board? That property there is that? Because there's some parking spaces that are right in front of the the depot right here. Yeah, I don't. It's either state land board or it's railroad, railroad right away. Okay. Or it's ours. <laughs> That's a real toss-up. Do, <laughs> Do we know the state land board's long-term intentions for that property? That's question one. And question number two is, do we know how frequently we're actually reaching capacity of the parking around the <coughs> oh, no no actually we, I don't know what their long-term plans are for that and I don't know if you've heard anything yeah yeah we we've, we've been talking to them in conjunction with the city ditch trail to oh well, I didn't know that okay <laughs> so we've looked at it they've approached us we may go to appraisal soon so the city's looking at purchasing that property? I think we need a portion of it for city ditch anyway. Um, there's a portion of the city ditch that... Farther to the north? Yeah, it mm -hmm. goes up there. So. Dave, did you... I'm just going to add that Littleton Public Schools years ago tried to negotiate with state land board for all or part of that same parcel for use for the uh, bus facility. They got nowhere. Yeah, they, have, they have a 99 year lease right. on on the state land board their property is actually a lease over there where they park the school buses oh. and they litigated over that 10 i don't remember when over the 99 year lease but the school board won that one dave is there anything that could be done with the right away on the street where it goes north or goes east-west between the state land board property and Buck Center I and mean, there's no parking along there now is the street maxed out on the right-of-way could we get parking on either side of that street I mean maybe you could fit some parallel there no is that a street or is well, that a driveway that's, no it's a, street. It's, it's a street it's a street yeah it's a street that comes into court place then and got uh, these parking spaces here you got the curb oh it looks kind of narrow I don't well, and that's why I'm asking, is, is the street right now maxed out in the right-of-way, or do we have room where we could expand the pavement area and even get, get more, if, maybe more than just parallel parking, even some diagonal parking? Or, or something, yeah. It's, it's a pretty limited traffic pattern through there. Yeah. For that matter, there's that weird polygonal-shaped property between the uh, city ditch trail and the, uh, and the art depot. As it turns the corner there, I don't know. It, it's awkward. It'd be hard to get efficient parking there, but you know, half a dozen spaces here and a dozen spaces there, and you're getting to the 20 or 30 that are typically used as overflow parking on the uh, land board property. Carolyn did look at the west side of Court Place, and, and there wasn't enough room there to expand the additional parking, uh, other than where it is now. If you look at adding parking to the south. 
well, and I can understand the reluctance to cram parking right up against the city ditch trail. We're going to go to the trouble and the expense with the grant money to, uh, to improve on it, but um, we have competing needs here for the ditch trail and the Buck Center. And I, I'll tell you quite frankly, I've been there often enough with my granddaughters to know that parking can be a real problem. Any other questions? Well, I just want to add to Dave's comment there. I mean, uh, what is stated here is that during the period of 9 o'clock and 1.30, they are at capacity for both the on-site parking and the on-street spaces. So they are already during certain times of the day and sounds like throughout the week in an overflow situation. So even today, we're already at capacity, which is the, um, just relying on the on-site. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but not only are we looking at these 23 parking places down here off of Littleton Boulevard, but we're also looking at amending the, the, the plan to eliminate the need for these others, uh, the off-site parking on uh, Port Place. Is that true? Mm -hmm. No. No. The, 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 the 23 spaces are coming from this Yes, yeah, so I understand. I, I understand. Okay. They're coming from there. The, and the other, but we're also looking at eliminating the the sixty five, their requirement for the sixty five places on Cork Place. Is that no, true? no, the sixty five spaces were actually off site completely. I mean, they were not in. They were not on this area at all. They were actually the other forty two spaces were um, leased off of the Littleton Village or Village School okay. property. And as um, and what was happening is that the patrons are actually overflow parking on the state land board property instead of honoring the 2003 lease with the school. But we're also eliminating the need for those 42 or 65 places off site parking. Correct, places. but that doesn't that doesn't affect the parking that's already on the on court place. That's still intact. That would be still there. So what we're looking at is, is getting rid of 23 and 65. No, no. 65 total. 65 total. Yeah, that includes the 23 and then the 42 spaces that were leased off of the village school property. So we're, we're eliminating their need for them to have those 42 places in addition to getting rid of these 23. Right. Does South Suburban pay money for the lease to village schools? Well, I, I don't know. I it doesn't sound like it's a lease. It. It's I kind of doubt agreement. it. It sounds like it's an agreement, actually, yeah. to me. Yeah. Steve. Yeah, I understand the uh, idea why we need to uh, look at the Sternberg um, parking, but why at this time are we doing the other at the same time? Just because it's a convenience? Because we're already we're dealing with the issues? We're, yeah, we're dealing with the issue, and you know, thought, well, the, having a requirement on the PD plan doesn't make it go away as far as them still needing to find parking for their patrons. So we were just cleaning that up. But. So there's not a reason as far as the Buck Center on why we're dealing with the 42 spaces right now. No. And it's not a request by South Suburban either. Yeah. So, and so that's, but the one, the one that is important is, is um, releasing the encumbrance on this side. And if, you know, if you all have a concern about the other 42 spaces and still leaving that on the PD plan, that's, that's certainly your, you can make that recommendation if you'd like, you know, to the council. Dave. Just to follow up on my comment about enforcing offsite parking, presumably there are businesses downtown other than Jose's and Merle's that have offsite parking requirements. If one of those businesses, and sorry, Joe, but I keep using your place, but if Jose's would decide to, to get rid of their off-site parking over south of, uh, of Alamo, what would the city do about it? I mean, they'd no longer be providing the off-site parking required for their Main Street business. So what would the city's recourse be? Well, then it would be a violation of code. So we're going to give the city a pass that we won't give a private business. Well, we're not saying a pass, but this is a PD plan. And, and that's a little bit different in the creation of a PD plan versus zoning, straight zoning requirements. And I mean, if that's how you feel about it, it's certainly your prerogative to recommend 
against the elimination of those spaces. I think that planning department brought that to you because that's the actual current use of the property. Um, nobody actually uses those spaces on the school board land, um, but it's certainly within your purview to recommend against that. But I think the situations are a little bit different. I mean, if the code were to Legally, change. Legally, they're different, but in, in terms of practical effect, they're not different at all. Well, but if the code were to change and there were no longer off-site parking requirements downtown, then my answer would be different. Understood. Right? Understood. And, and we've studiously avoided doing anything about that for about two years now. Jan, a question on page five. It says, by removing the encumbrance, this property will become more economically viable. Otherwise, it'll remain a vacant, unused office building. So they wouldn't open that building at all? Well, they, they, they wouldn't have parking. Well, we have shared parking I mean, agreement with them. Well, we them. have a shared parking agreement with them, but it's still, you know, it's an agreement that can be revoked, and it's, it's right. not, and it's, and it's shared. It's got terms as to when they can use it and when they can. So it's not like he has full, you know, full you full right to the parking spaces on his property. It's a, it would be a shared arrangement, which, you know, isn't clear, you know, isn't completely clear, like, like if we agree to that. So by passing this, would the shared parking agreement go away? Yes. Okay. So why can't we enforce off-site parking, but by default here, it is enforced upon the, this property, this Sternberg, what's it called? Sternberg. Sternberg. And that they cannot use that parking space because we have an agreement. It just well, well, right, seems like well, right now we have a PD plan that that um, has de <clears throat> has basically designated the parking spaces on that property to to uh, accommodate the Buck Center, and that's because it was all originally owned. All that property is owned by the city, and I believe you know years ago, you know the city's vision kind of was they didn't know what they were going to do with that building then, and the, I think the thought somewhat from previous councils was eventually it would be torn down and it would be all made parking to accommodate the courts and the, the rec center. But that's changed and, and the council's decided to sell it off to a private owner to, to use that building as an office building. So I understand that, but the PD plan with the 65, uh, a phase two with the 65 offsite parking spaces is creating this encumbrance on this property. Yes. At least for the 23. For the 23. Spaces, yeah. And so if if this PD plan is enforcing that, then to me, any amendment that we make to the PD plan, again, is something that we should enforce in the future, whether it's on-site parking or off-site parking. Do you, under, do, you, do you understand what I'm trying to get to? We're saying we can't enforce off-site parking, but yet it's creating an encumbrance for this particular property. It is, it is, yes. It is. Yeah. It's essentially a legal imp impediment. It's a legal encumbrance. You have to be able to show that you can meet it. On the 23? Right. But well, well, on the, on the overflow of 65 or whatever it is. Yeah, and when we say we have trouble enforcing it, I think we have trouble enforcing where people park. Yeah. I, I mean, we're not out there asking people who enter the Buck Center, did you park on a state land board or did you park up by the, you know, the school buses? So... When we say we have trouble enforcing it, we don't have trouble enforcing the fact that people have it or provide it. We have trouble enforcing Where? whether anybody is actually using it. When you have a state land board property that's not fenced off and looks like a big parking lot, that's where people park. But, but presumably, we, when we accept an arrangement through a PD or PDO or whatever for another business, say in the downtown the Main Street area, for providing or affording uh, a certain number of off-site parking spaces and, and Merle's comes to mind because it was a pretty complicated arrangement. The city expects to be able to verify that those parking spaces, that those arrangements are in place, right? So there, this is really no different from that. No, that we can do, well, but clarify, just like Jose's, we can't make people park there. Uh, understood. Wait, yes. It's, it's, it's verifying the, the ability to deliver on the agreement. It's, 
Jan? I just want to verify Merle's. They, he got a waiver for 92 parking spaces. He has no requirement to provide off-site spaces. We don't enforce his requirement. There is no requirement. And yet at the time, a lot was made of his arrangements to have this much off-site parking over here and that much over there. I know it wasn't but part of the agreement, no, but it was part of the discussion. Yeah. Steve, don't you recall it that way? On the, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, um, so, on so, the, on uh, Merle's PDO, there is nothing having to do with any of the, nothing is going to be enforced. Which is another reason why I keep pushing for including rationale in discussion about an agreement, not merely a four to three or seven to zero vote, but rationale, because sooner or later it comes back to bite you. Let me ask you this: if if we would amend the PD to reduce the off-site parking requirement to the 42, right now the standing agreement with Village School would sustain the situation; we wouldn't have a legal conflict which would then buy the city time to find additional spaces should that option be taken away at some future time by LPS. Is that correct? You could make that recommendation. Okay. Glenn, Thank you. you had, did you have something? No, I think we got to where we needed to get. So. Okay. Jenny? Oh. Yeah, I have just one more question. And is there any signage that would direct uh, anyone coming to the Buck Center to park at the Village School? I don't think there is, huh? For overflow parking, that there's any direction? Because I wouldn't anticipate to park there, that I, I wouldn't know that I, that would be okay. Um, so I just wondered if there was any type of signage. Uh, Kurt? Jan, one last question I think on the Sternberg property. Is that property sold and closed? Mm -hmm. And that owner didn't recognize the fact that he had that problem beforehand? And He knew when he closed. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. But, so that this was a risk. Yeah. Ben. We made it very clear. <laughs> I mean, he knew that he had the problem. Oh, yeah. Before, and they were shared spaces. Any other questions? All right. We generally have an applicant presentation. So that is the city. So um, <laughs> anything else from the city as an applicant and the staff report? Okay, and I'm going to ask one more question, Suzanne. If we did amend that, that to to match up the uh, the offsite, the overflow parking requirements with the current arrangement, informal though it may be, with uh, LPS, and LPS somewhere down the road says you can no longer do that, who then is responsible for coming up with the additional parking spaces? South Suburban, the center itself, or the city? It would most likely be the city because we we were the owner of the property and does it call out specifically it just says off-site or does it call out where the off-site has to be it, it just, just says, says off-site off it just it says off-site okay so the we would why i know it got called out is because when they came in with their site development plan that's how they addressed it yeah. so we would then need to look at other options all right this is a public <coughs> hearing and we have nobody signed up on the public hearing roster, so does anybody wish to talk about this? Seeing none, can we get a motion to close the public hearing? If you can bear with me for 10 seconds, I can come up with a motion. I'll make the motion to uh, close the public hearing. Second. Let's see. Craig seconded. <laughs> All right, all those in favor of closing the public hearing? And it's all in favor? So, discussion. You want a motion on the table before we discuss? Sure. Okay. Then I propose the following motion. That Planning Commission Resolution Number 11-07 be amended to include a reduced requirement for the center to obtain 42 off-site parking spaces and approved, which forwards a favorable recommendation to City Council. Second. Okay, we have a motion and it's been seconded. Um, discussion? Jenny? Um, just one thing that I, I do think that the, the parking needs do need to still be addressed with the 42 off-street parking spaces. And I, with bicycle parking, I anticipate that there being more usage with the uh, city ditch trail. So one of the things that 
Um, and I, I don't know how what the other planning commissioners think, but uh, whether that's just something that mentioned to, uh, if we include it as an amendment to add more bicycle parking, to address the fact that we are reducing um, the parking spaces on the Sternberg site uh, as an option to address the parking needs. Is bicycle parking in the actual PD plan? Sorry. Yes, I believe it calls out 16 bicycle spaces. And what's the usage currently of that? Do you know? No. Differs day to day. So. Jenny, can we? Address Dave's motion and then come back to the part the bicycle parking. Any comments on Dave's motion, Craig? Um, yeah, I'd just like to add that in generally I'm in favor of reducing parking requirements in a facility like this to encourage um, alternative means to get there. Um, however, it seems to me reducing it as much as was proposed here uh, could produce a hardship both for. Um, the uh, the neighborhood and the users of the center um, and it could even set a precedent for uh, future redevelopment in the general area um, so I support um, Commissioner Metcalf's motion um, I'm in favor of eliminating the encumbrance on the Sternberg property um, but I think that the Buck Center needs to provide adequate parking for its um, not only current users but potential future users Steve? I feel uh, that the uh, encumbrance should be lifted for the Sternberg property. Um, however, I don't see uh, eliminating all 65 spaces and putting the, uh, the pressure on the neighborhood. So I'd, I'd agree with Dave's motion also. I'm going to elaborate a little bit if you'll bear with me. You know, when the original PD plan was approved in 2003, it was based on projections, but then most PDs or PDOs are based on projections because we're not really strict, following strict zoning. And what's happened is the, the current conditions seem to suggest that it isn't really, there isn't really a strong need for that overflow parking as, as was anticipated. If we go ahead and amend this the way we're talking about and pass it, then I suggest that, I, I suspect there are two things working for and against the adequacy of the parking there. One is the, the hope for increased bicycle traffic, but then offsetting that is that you're then going to be opening, opening the additional uh, recreational usage of the uh, City Ditch Trail. So that's going to tend to put more parking into the area. So it's going to be interesting to see when and if LPS gets around to saying, sorry, you can't use our lot anymore. We have a reduced overall level of parking at the center because of the additional bicycle use or we have more demand because of the increased uh, city ditch trail use. So things change. We're trying to accommodate the change temporarily and plan for the future, and I think this does that. Other comments? Dave, can you re read your motion? Right. That Planning Commission Resolution 11-07 be amended to include a reduced requirement for the center to obtain 42 off-site parking spaces and the resolution be approved, which forwards a favorable recommendation to City Council. Okay. Good. So are we ready to vote? All right. So everybody in favor of that? And that is everyone in favor? Okay, now for the main motion. That was it. That was the main motion. Okay. In the motion. So we're. You still have Jenny's motion. Oh, yeah, Jenny, wanted. the bicycle. So, Jenny, you would like to increase the biking? Well, actually, David did make a good point of that the, the users, there may be parking uh, needs as well, that trading off the, the vehicle parking. Um, I, I would like to see more bike parking, but maybe that's something that the rec center does and evaluates as the city ditch trail is installed and to monitor the parking needs um, to also make the parking more family friendly so that it's very visible and not blocked by parked cars. 
I guess that's just one of the things. So I, I won't add anything to it, but I would just hope that the rec center does keep that on your radar screen to provide very visible and accessible parking from the city ditch trail. Does it, uh, excuse me, doesn't the, uh, the trail system have a requirement to have a, a place to uh, park your bicycles also? I don't know if it does, but the trail property or the property adjacent to the trail between Court Place and the trail would be a lot more amenable to bicycle parking that could be shared between the ditch and the center than it is to car parking. So that's something to think about. And certainly the, the, the key sign for that, your sign would be people parking or tying their bikes up to trees or, uh, or each other. Okay, Steve. So in, so in essence, that with that vote, we just reduced the parking spaces from the 65 to the 42? You made a recommendation to do that. Yes, um, but we're, we're not saying that, the, that it's being lifted from the Sternberg property yet, are we? That's, that, that's, in the, that's part of the resolution. The only, only thing I amended is in the resolution is a reduction, a change from eliminating all 65 overflow spaces for the... Uh, Center to 42. Okay, so the so that would include uh, removing the encumbrance from the Sternberg. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other? Anything else on this topic? I have another comment for the rec center, and this was brought up about signage for overflow parking and directing them to where overflow parking would be. So I would, again, that's something else that, uh, considering that we have reduced the spaces, we already have an overflow situation that people are just assuming can be um, on the land board property, uh, that we, I encourage you to put um, some sort of signage to direct people to where overflow should go. Okay. Anything else? Seeing none, that takes us to reports. Um, any reports from the staff? <coughs> I don't have one. Maybe a second. Nope. No, none. Um, HP board liaison. Tony. Yeah, the uh, Historic Preservation Board <coughs> had uh, some discussions at their last meeting. Uh, to uh, trim the uh, historic preservation code and get rid of unnecessary language and also to empower the board as the final authority on, on those issues in the city. Uh, as it was currently, as it is currently, the, uh, if they make an approval or, or, or a denial or something, it, the appeals process goes to the city council. And if this change in the code gets approved, they would be the final authority in any uh, appeals process would go to uh, municipal court and keep the city council out of it and, and not be second guessing them and have the courts be the ones that second guess them. Um, there's also some uh, discussion about them attending uh, design review committee meetings and it was uh, said that at that point there, there are some issues in the DRC that they probably shouldn't be, uh, they may be ruling on so that they shouldn't attend. So there was some uh, discussion along the lines of what we had about us attending the DRC meetings, uh, that they would have to uh, either remove themselves from the meeting or if the issue came to them and they did not remove themselves, they would have to recuse themselves on any uh, issues that came before them if they were uh, privy to any prior information. Uh, that's about it. Okay. Commissioners, any reports from the commissioners? Okay. Uh, I have one. Uh, the week before last, I um, attended the Colorado APA American Planning Association meeting up near Stapleton and uh, a couple of the sessions that uh, stood out for me were first of all in the awards dinner the um, um, the projects that won that are the, the municipalities that won the top awards um, were those that were doing comp plans comp plan updates um, that um, incorporated innovative 
techniques to um, address sustain sustainability and the link between land use and transportation. Um, so I thought that was particularly timely um, in uh, what we're addressing here. Uh, the, the top award winners that I saw were uh, Fort Collins and uh, Woodland Park. Um, and, and then um, another presentation by Denver Water and the State Water Board um, that really drove home to the commissioners, and this was a, for commissioner, for planning commissioners, um, drove home the pending tightening of water supplies that we all hear about and talk about, but it's, it's um, risen to a level now where um, planning staff, planning commissioners should be really concerned about it. Um, it's showing up in higher water rates and in, in tiered rates uh, by Denver Water and others, and it's only going to get worse. Um, there's projects out there, major infrastructure projects to supply more water that are looking at uh, things like using recycled water for drinking water, which is a, which is a new one. So um, just thought I'd share that. Anyone else? And I have no report either, so do we have a motion to adjourn to continue our uh, special study session to discuss the da draft downtown area plan? So moved. Craig moves, second. Who's second. And Kurt seconds. All in favor? And everyone's in favor? So should we take a a four and a half minute break to um, regroup here. So we'll take a, a quick break to switch our subjects. Are we going to meet in this, uh, in the chambers here? In this room, yeah.
great. Thanks, man. ready to go whenever they come back. So Dennis, are you the only one with us? Well, I think temporarily at least. Hmm. I think uh, Glenn's probably come back. Suzanne, I think, has taken off and uh, I think Jane's gone. Jan's gone, so. Um, but. Uh, I'll, I'll try my best. Um, Jan's going to go have a drink. Uh, probably. <laughs> probably true. Or two. <laughs> or two. Three. Oh, uh, exactly. This is the special study, special session for the Planning Commission. And Dennis, did you want to talk about what we have? And yes, absolutely. We, um, do we have a specific agenda? We, uh, I did not put anything out. I thought what we were going to do was just do the appendices and get an executive summary. So those two things were I had on my agenda for, from last time. So I'm sorry I didn't, I didn't type that up. Um, the good news is a couple of things. Are good news. Uh, one is Linda did a ton of work, and so that's been incorporated in here. She's really been working uh, very hard and gotten a lot of some information, uh, a lot of. Uh, research she's been doing in terms of what the, the Planning Commission has done over the years as they've been working on the plan, uh, looking into her files, and luckily she has very uh, thorough files, and pulled up information put together a good summary for us, I think, on a lot of uh, particularly the process and the background in terms of what went into this. So I really appreciate that. Um, Chris Hargath in the city's department is actually starting to work on our uh, cover page, so we're going to have that up and running here for too long. The bad news is, to go with the, the good news, um, is that we're running into the busiest schedule for both Kelly and for Chris because we have Western Welcome Weekend coming up and we've got you know, the, the uh, newspaper coming out and all kinds of stuff. So uh, they very graciously have said they would help us and we'll try and, and we'll fit it in to the best possible and knowing those two that we will um, get a, a, an excellent product as quickly as they possibly can. But um, it's not the, the uh, least busy season for them, so it's, it's the heaviest time of the year for them, unfortunately, so as we get this together. Um, we particularly wanted to look at the appendices tonight, um, and I don't know how you want to proceed, Linda, if you want to. Uh, I'd gotten comments from Kurt and from Linda and from David uh, and from uh, Craig in terms of you know, what you saw in the appendices and comments. And I don't think I got comments from anybody else. If anybody else sent them, I apologize. I didn't get them. Uh, and if you did, send them to me again. I will incorporate them. Uh, but I did get those comments and did get those in, into the document. Uh, and as I said, the majority of the comments came from Linda, who put together uh, quite a bit of information. The, the first thing, downtown 2011, as you're looking through that, uh, there's not a lot of changes in that. There was more editorial. Um, Kurt had a couple changes that I think make a lot of sense, and uh, that was pretty much it. Uh, the second appendix, Appendix B, Downtown's Future, pretty much the same thing. Not a lot of changes to that. We've gone through those issues before, uh, and I'm not by just running through these, uh, hoping to cut off all conversation, but just kind of run through them as an overview. Appendix C, uh, Planning Process and Timeline, is the one that uh, Linda put up. Uh, a lot of time in it is actually a, a new appendix. I, put, I don't know if that's what you intended, Linda, but to me it looked like a whole new uh, appendix chapter, if that's all right. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really talking about the planning process and the timeline as distinct from the outreach process. And so I think I'd like to get your feedback on that. But she went through, uh, and again, we'll pull this into the same format and same font and all those things as, as, as we, uh, if, if you're uh, supportive of what's here. Uh, but Linda, you want to talk a little bit about kind of what you're thinking about in terms of the, the kind of the outline, kind of material put in it? Yeah, what I basically did is I went through back to some of the old agendas and I put together kind of what some of the process was for the existing comprehensive plan and some of the input that we received from 
uh, various entities such as parking uh, with Charlie Boston and economic development with Chris Gibbons. So it was, uh, it, the effort was to try to detail all that, you know, everything that the, we've been doing in the past years to come up with a comp plan. So you might think that it's a lot and I do think it, it really needs some editing. It no, yeah, Linda did note a couple times that the, she didn't see this as a final product, but kind of an initial draft that she wanted us to look at. So. And then I put together a timeline that lists everything from the beginning uh, since the, uh, a new planning commission was appointed and we've got our marching orders, so to say, to redo the downtown area comp plan. So I tried to put a lot of detail in here of some of the big events that happened. So, and again, I don't know if you guys think it's too much detail or if it makes sense and what you might want to do with that. And if you think it's too long, we certainly could you know, change the format and make it look smaller as well. But I think it's a great overview in terms of the detail. And what I heard from Linda was she really wanted to give credit to the Planning Commission uh, for the, the depth of, of research and discussion that you'd had. And, and she thought that was a great way to do it. I think it's very effective. The next uh, appendix, which is now Appendix D, is Public Outreach Program. And Linda rewrote that, so what you're seeing in, in legislative edit here, I've crossed out what was here uh, just so you'll have it. And then uh, Linda rewrote uh, and, and revised some of the information starting on what is now page 46. Um, and this will be a, a shorter document than it looks here just because, again, we have a lot of material that's being cut out. Uh, so it won't be it won't be this long. The majority of the material right now it actually is in the appendices. Uh, interestingly enough, I think the front part is shorter. But I think that's kind of what we were intending was to get a lot of that material out of the plan, so that the meat would be in the planning section, and the background material would be in the appendix. So, Linda, you want to again talk about kind of what you thought yeah. in terms of the changes that you made? And again, if you decided that you want to consolidate some of the like huts and gardens, open house, downtown re residents, focus meeting, downtown retailers and property owners. If you guys want to consolidate that into one paragraph, that would be good. And also some of the comments and suggestions from the public all outreach was subjective on my part. So there may be a, a number of comments that you may want to exclude or include or kind of modify from there. I tried to classify them too into various subject matters that we had discussed. So, and I arbitrarily took from all of the recommendations of all the public outreach, I just took whatever I thought looked interesting and just put it down. So, Linda, can you just clarify? So, what changed? So, what changed significantly from your first pass, pass at this versus what you're presenting now? What were the big, the bigger changes? There seems to be some things that you've kept in, but. Well, I think it was from the initial public outreach that's in this document. Mm -hmm. Basically, I detailed out all of the public outreach and the process and the results of the survey in a little bit different manner. Okay. So, and whereas the public outreach in our binder here mm -hmm. focused more on the survey and we had so many other public outreach meetings and you know we got a lot of input from just a tremendous amount of people to develop this plan so that's it's kind of a rewrite yeah thank you for doing that mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then glossary E, which used to be D, was the glossary of terms used in the plan. And we just went through that real briefly last time in terms of what I was looking at adding. I've added those uh, to this draft. So I've added additional terms that I saw in the plan. We've tried to remove terms that were not in the plan. Um, and so I've actually just gone through the plan and, and tried to pick out uh, subjectively and what I thought might be a, a term that someone wanted a definition for uh, and tried to find something that's fairly universal for that. Uh, so if you look through those and just see if, if, the, if the definitions make sense and also uh, if there are things missing or things that you seem I think are unnecessary that we can take out. That's uh, basically what, what that section does. Um, and Appendix E, uh, we had taken out the, the traffic counts at the last meeting, so we've taken those out and we'll actually incorporate that information into the uh, existing conditions, uh, the, chap the first chapter. 
Um, and then we left the recommendations for sustainability as we had talked about at the last last go around on this. Um, acknowledgements, I did um, add a, a few acknowledgements at the suggestion of, of, of the commission. Thank you very much for uh, pointing those out that they were missing. If you think of anybody else that's missing, let me know. Um, so we make sure we get everybody covered. I appreciate that. Um, and then the question is, Lynn, I guess, how, how do you want to address these? One of my thoughts was to kind of use the same approach that we used at the last meeting that Matt suggested, have a limit of five minutes in discussing each paragraph. And I was hoping that we could go through downtown 2011, downtown's future, and citywide recommendations for sustainability, and then go to the glossary, and then start addressing the public outreach and the process. I guess the question is, there are several of these chapters you have seen, several you've not seen, and I don't know if it's fair for you to, to, to have the same limited amount of time to, to look at those tonight. I, if you're comfortable doing that, it, it certainly works for me, but uh, let's see, see what you're comfortable doing. So. And that's what uh, I was thinking, because we have looked at the downtown 2011 and the downtown future. Right. Um, glossary is new, or some of the definitions are new to us, um, but we also have had the citywide recommendations for sustainability. The other thing I think we've talked about, too, is that we're looking at this a little differently, that this is not um, as perhaps as detail significant as uh, as the planning section is itself, because this is the appendix. Uh, it doesn't carry the same weight. It really is, is, is background material. Uh, it's not providing some, as much guidance. It's really just background. So uh, from that standpoint, you know, we may not have to worry as much about, you know, uh, the wording on it as we do in the, the front section. But, uh, I think that's up to you as to, because uh, it certainly as close as we can get it to, to what you're comfortable with, the better off we are. Tony? Um, yeah, we're, we're done with Appendix A, right? No, we haven't addressed it yet. Tony <coughs> went through it before. <clears throat> this is all looking alike to me. Well, we, we've had Appendix A, but we haven't approved it. But we've gone through the executive summary. Right, and, and we're, we're going to get, we're supposed to have had a rewrite of the executive summary for today's meeting. And we've got that, right? No, I did not, I, I did not get that done, and I apologize. It, uh, okay. So I still need to do that, and I will get that out to you. Okay, do you guys agree to do A and B tonight? And then I also would propose that we talk about the timeline again and the process. Good. Is that okay? My only concern is, it's just not concern, but I just want to make sure that this um, goes quickly. Again, these are supporting documents. They're not intended to be guidelines or actions, et cetera. It's just supporting documents. So um, let us not spend too much time um, getting caught up on the the words per se, let's just make sure the essence of what and the information, generally speaking, is accurate. And, and um, there hasn't been any changes here. So anybody that that's gone through this, if they have any issues, you know, let's bring it up now. Let's see if we can get through this uh, page by page instead of paragraph okay. by paragraph. Yeah. You know, keep something in mind, Tony. Some of us have been over this a half a dozen times with no resolution. I mean, it's never come up for discussion. We submit comments. We don't discuss it. Submit comments. Don't discuss it. There's a backlog here. I'm sorry. I guess I don't understand what you're saying. I mean, a lot of this has come, come to us half a dozen times. Each time we provide comments, 
we rarely resolve those comments. So the next time around, we accumulate comments. We've we've built up a backlog. This um, is it's not like this is just a final tweak to something that we've approved along the way. And here's our opportunity to provide those comments. So I'm, I'm just explaining. It isn't just a question of a little wordsmithing here or a couple of comments here or there. There's a lot of this that we really haven't come to grips with for six months or more. So let's take. Just my, my take on this is that I read this. It makes sense to me. And, and I don't see any, the reason to go through a paragraph by paragraph unless somebody has a serious issue with, with a paragraph or, or, or the, uh, the gist of the, of the, of the uh, information here. Well, look. Um, so a question for David. David, the comments um, that have been brought up in the past, are those things that sh should be addressed in an appendix? I, so why is it that these fall into an appendix versus having? That was a an expedient adopted, help me, Linda, four months ago, five months ago, when we decided that we had too much copy in the front end uh -huh. of the document that was dealing more with history or the situation as it is and so we were how do we how do we cut down the body of the, the main body of the document it was oh let's push it into an appendix and that's fine overall when you're just talking about well in 1870 Littleton was you know, that doesn't matter but when you start talking about significant issues that were raised through the survey through the open house and then with very distinct stakeholder groups who had different perspectives and different priorities, it's important not to lose that, to, to have that in there and show how, how what we heard from them is connected to the plan we're proposing, filtered through practicalities that we glean from looking at other communities, other, other uh, efforts to plan from our own city staff in terms of what works, what doesn't, what we have to be watch out for. If you don't, if there is no connection there, it doesn't mean much. It's, it's just, well, yeah, we did a bunch of research, and trust us, it's all in the plan. Well, and from my perspective, what City Council asked us to initially do is define change and changing conditions, which is um, listed in the code as something that we need to consider if the zoning doesn't meet the tenants of the comp plan. So what this does is it lays out, here's our current conditions. Here's what we anticipate the future conditions are. And that will help in the in potential zoning decisions to at least get the thinking. So, for, is there any question around or issues around the current situation? Is there any issues with Appendix A? Well, because that should be more more a statement of fact. Really, we're we're documenting the state of today. Right. Right. Um, how, can we? Should we just attack it and go through page if, by page? If, well, I, I'll tell you what, if anybody's got an issue with Appendix A, speak now, because I'm going to make a motion that we approve it as, as a I would here. just point out real quickly that there were a couple changes in there that were just suggested by Kurt and I did make, so, uh, but they're pretty much uh, editorial. The first one is editorial, at least on, on page 31, where we changed uh, older to vintage. That um, sure makes it sound nice. Right. <laughs> okay, wait, where? It does. Vintage. Uh, it is. Versus a vintage. Vintage exactly, that's right. If it's uh, underneath retail, it's the second paragraph under retail on page 31. Uh, the first line there had uh, Prince Street, where it intersects with Santa Fe at the north entrance to downtown, has it, it did say an older motel, and, and, um, and, and uh, it was suggested we change it to vintage. I actually prefer the word older than vintage. No, no offense. Is just, it vintage? What is how the about just a motel? Yeah, that would be, okay. that would that be would fine. Be okay. Yeah. So all those in favor of just changing it to a motel? Wait a minute. How are we going to approach this? I mean, Tony suggested if, if nobody has a problem, we just vote the whole thing through. Okay. So do we each list our problems paragraph by paragraph? Do we want to go back to what we were saying before? We go through it and see who has a problem with any paragraph. We have to have a way of doing it and just saying, does the majority want to just approve it as it is, leaving everybody's comments or concerns out of it is not a way to proceed. That's my problem I had with it. With? With my motion? No, with vintage. Because it, it made it sound like it was a nice place. He should want to visit it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so if we settle somewhere in the middle and, and not go paragraph by paragraph, but if we try to go page by page, that way we can at least 
get through it a little Jenny? bit quicker. And can we do what uh, Matt had done the last time around of where we just, uh, I mean, we have just a brief time to, to look at it and then if we have any comments and let's time ourselves and keep moving so that um, we can go through this. And that way, anyone who has come up with some comments can bring them up and let's keep moving. So do we want page by page or paragraph by paragraph and no, to spend no more than five minutes? I would do minutes? page by page. I would not do paragraph by paragraph. And if we wind up <laughs> discussing something, we'll be on a time. Yeah. I would even suggest section by section. For here, section, so I'm good plan. with section by section as well. Appendix A. <laughs> Appendix A. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's not what I meant. <laughs> Let's get going then. How about section A, land use and urban design down to uh, the number one. Hey, hey, quick question, Linda. Are these uh, headings, land use and urban design, consistent with the, right, the detailed recommendations in the body of the plan? Yes, they are, and, and in the same order. So. Okay. Then, Linda, which document are we working off of? Dennis's re revision? <laughs> I've had to yeah. do both. Okay, so <laughs> we're, this is what we're approving, though, correct? Mm -hmm. Or any mm -hmm. revisions to it? Okay. Real quick, the today downtown is still a mixed use neighborhood is kind of t repetitive because the next sentence says the historic mix of uses, design, and scale remains largely intact. So we could delete that or we could leave it in six and one half dozen the other. What do you guys think? I like leaving it in. It just reinforces it's still mixed use and this is how it's mixed use today versus back in the day. What do you guys think? Leave it the way it is? Okay. Uh, any other comments? It's good to go. No other comments? All those in favor? And we'll just do hand um, votes. All those in favor of that section? That is everyone. And um, all right, so then we go to government and institutions, number one. My only comments was we have no references to where we got the information. Mm. So you'd, you'd like footnotes or? Kurt's looking at me like a, <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be nice to have references to where we got the information. Um, but it's just a nice thing. Yeah, we got them directly by, it, it's kind of a combination of sources, some by calling, some by uh, just checking with BIA. What do you guys think? I mean, do you, does it matter to you that we have references? No. Nope. I really don't care whether it's 18,000 students or 17,913 or 18,031. It really doesn't matter. <coughs> okay, so it sounds like. Although, good point. Um, do we need to specify? I, I think the document is going to be dated at the end of the day. So it, it's if this lives on years from now, let's just maybe put a date as of mm -hmm. April 2010 or whatever month we're in, 11. <laughs> June. So maybe not a, a reference of where it came from, but just. I, I think that almost goes without I saying. I, as, I, as of 2011. Yeah. I'll make a motion when you approve uh, governance and institution as written. Second. All those in favor? Okay, that is approved. Housing? Make a motion we approve housing as written. Okay, can, can, we, can we at least talk about it before we jump right into a vote? Okay. How accurate is the 500 housing units? And thinking through a Lexan and a Nevada place and Littletown and all the apartments south of here mm -hmm. and then the apartments north of, of uh, ACC, mm -hmm. my gut feeling tells me we're talking significantly more than that. Actually, we had Eric go out and, and, and count it, you know, not go out and count it, but, but look at all of his numbers. It's a little rough just because we don't know where all the housing units are. We don't quite trust you know, our data source on some of it. That's about right. 350 of those are at Alexan, amazingly. So that means that we only have about 150 other places, most of them being single family. There's some larger apartments, but not that There's many. There's 70, say what, 71 just in the R5 zone. Right. Plus the ones at Nevada Place. Right. They're, they're, they're between the two of them well, and Alexan, you're already at 500. Blow to us too, and so we actually actually asked. It Eric can't be accurate. Check. How many are in Nevada Place? 100, uh, three in, uh, Nevada Place has uh, 63 total, 36 right now that are open. I think, sorry. Right. 
See, and then, then you count all these apartments down here mm -hmm. and Littletown. We can ask Eric to look at it again. Yeah, okay. sure. I, sure. I move that sure. Eric looks at this again. Okay. Uh, just to <coughs> confirm the number. No second? Second? No. Uh, all those in favor no, of having the, your... Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, about, about looking just at the looking numbers. at the 500 yeah. housing yeah. units mm -hmm. or validating the housing units. All those in favor? Okay, that's everybody. And Dave, sorry. Uh, the next paragraph. I'm a little concerned about <clears throat> the the assumption that the residents say this, where it's the second sentence on this next pa on page 31. Despite their proximity, residents in these neighborhoods often drive to downtown rather than walk. Quote, because of the barrier presented by the railroad depression. Okay, that may apply to the people north of the Bucks and east of the Buck Center, but it doesn't apply elsewhere. The main reason people drive instead of walk is most people won't walk more than a quarter mile. To pretend otherwise is being naive, if not just outright disingenuous. I think that may be implied in, in that, but I, you're certainly right. And I think it's just implied because there's, only, there's so few crossings because of the uh, because of the depression. So it's uh, if you're two blocks south on Bemis, it makes it that much farther to walk than if you had a direct access. But if I'm living in Stern Park, uh, mm -hmm. okay, it's two blocks to go up to, to Littleton Boulevard. Mm -hmm. It's a block or two blocks to go down <laughs> to Lake mm -hmm. and cross. And, you know, the only, other, the only people who would have trouble getting straight across because there's no land bridge are the people living immediately east of the Center for the Blind. Okay. So you want and to that's add the distance? park. There aren't many people living due east of the you want to add uh, relative distance or something to that effect and, 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 the, and the barrier? Yeah, I, I just don't want to set the stage for somebody coming back in the future saying, oh, well, this is why we were trying to do more crossings because people weren't coming because of the lack of crossings. And that's, that's really exaggerated. Matt. Everything after walk. Great. Or you could even modify it to say people in these neighborhoods often drive downtown rather than walk, either because of barriers presented by few crossings or the distance. But let's be should, even handed about it before we, we start. get rid of because of their proximity then, despite their proximity, because we're saying that's the issue. So, if we're say, so it seems like we're conflicting with ourselves unless we get rid of that. I, I just want whatever we're saying in here to recognize that there are two obstacles or two motivations for people driving. One may in fact be the crossings and certainly that's true of the Progress Park neighborhood, you know, north and well, east about of if we the, say uh, despite their adjacency, residents in these neighborhoods often drive to downtown rather than walk because of the relative distance and the barrier presented by the river. Well, what about Matt's proposal just to delete, just say rather than walk period? I like Dennis's proposal, if you caught that, Dennis. Well, what we try and do when we're recognizing problems is then lay a foundation for prescribing solutions. If one of the solutions we're going to talk about in the plan is we need more crossings, then you tie it to this and say, right. it's not the only reason people drive, mm -hmm. but it's part of it. And that's so why we're addressing putting it. the bridges mm -hmm. in will solve part of it. But don't, let's not kid ourselves now or in the future with a plan that just putting another bridge or two across is going to solve all of that. It isn't. I suggest that we accept Dennis's revised language. All right. All those in favor to accept Dennis, Dennis's revised language? That is Dave against. All right. So are we done with that paragraph? Yes. Hmm? So we're now in three office and commercial services. I have a comment on this one. Or I'm asking for a clarification on the last sentence. In the old downtown neighborhood, comma, the zoning allows medical and dental offices. So is it is the intent here that the neighborhood, the zoning also allows medical and dental, or the zoning also uh, allows medical and dental offices only? only? Yeah, only. I think that's, that's a good point. So we just so, add only. So add only I, pro to I propose to modify that last sentence to be in the old downtown neighborhood that zoning allows medical and dental offices only. Okay. All those in favor of that paragraph? Oh, Matt, are you voting? All those in favor of that uh, paragraph with that modification? That's everybody. Uh, next is retail. So we're getting to Kurt's point about changing has a, a motel. 
I second that. So with a motel is fine. And, and could we strike out newer casual restaurants? What's new today, 10 years from now, will not be newer, and it really doesn't matter. It's the usage and the attraction, not, not the age. Speaking as somebody over, over okay. the newer category. So that's deleting the newer. Any other changes? What about deleting casual as well? Again, it's just a variety of restaurants. Does it need to be casual, oh. formal? Opus is formal. Yeah. Let's try casual. Okay. So any other changes? You don't think the pizza place is formal? So we're voting on deleting the, just changing it to a motel and getting rid of newer casual restaurants well, or casual. I actually, the way that it's worded sounds a little, I mean, that together the motel and the restaurants constitute the north entry retail. Um, oh, to me, yeah. the, the north entry retail is the, the casual restaurants. You're right. And the, mm -hmm. the motel, to me, doesn't feel like a part of the, the entry. I mean, it's... Not <laughs> it, it, it's, it's more. It's not the inviting. Right. Sure. The I agree. It, it's, yeah, it's referencing it's, the, the section on the map, on the framework right, map. Right. And that's why, so that's what the, that sub area is called. And that, so I agree. It doesn't feel like a welcoming entry, but, but the whole area is called the entry. North, yeah, so. Can we? Yeah, but the restaurants, I do think, is a, is a good thing to mention with the, um, uh, the north entry retail. I think that's important to keep. And we can mention the motel, but then that the retail is that entry. Can I propose that we get rid of the which together constitute the north entry retail and just say Prince Street, where it in intersects with Santa Fe, constitutes the north entry retail and has. There may be an easier way of doing that. Okay. If you take that phrase out. Uh, Prince, it's Prince Street, where it intersects with Santa Fe at the north entrance to downtown, has a motel and a variety of, of restaurants. Take that last clause out. Go with the next sentence. There's a vacant parcel on the northeast side of the intersection. Da, 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 da. Together, this constitutes the north entry retail, current and future. You don't have to say current and future. I'm just saying that that, that yes, last sentence wraps yes, it all together. Yes. So you're not do, yes. hanging the, the existence of a north entry retail on the existence of a motel and a couple of restaurants. Right. Okay, so repeat that. Can you repeat that, David? <laughs> so, David, oh, you're writing it. Just say Prince Street, which where it intersects with Santa Fe at the north entrance to downtown, has a motel and a variety of restaurants. Uh, strike the which together go to there is a vacant parcel on the northeast side of the intersection that has the potential for additional restaurant or other retail uses. I'm glad we dropped the residential based commercial. And then just say together these constitute the north entry retail. Okay. All those in favor of that language, are you voting? Yeah, okay, so that means everybody. Um, that gets us to scale. Second by Tony. Um, vote. Everybody's in favor. Circulation network. Tony? We ready to vote? Or? I'll second. Oh. Okay, everybody, everybody's in favor of that. Um, so let's go to B1 bicycles. Uh, Dave, are you voting? Well, yeah. Okay. You know, we got we got to get into this fairly easily. Ray, identify the section. Ask for any questions or challenges, and we don't have to have a motion. We can just say, okay, let's vote, yay or nay. Okay, just to move in, through it a little faster. All those in favor of the bicycles? Uh, seeing everyone. Um, parking. <laughs> Somebody want to update that comment? <laughs> I, I agree with Kurt's comment to delete that second sentence. So I just can't keep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> that was Kurt's as well. All my comments are on the older one. <laughs> And I agree with 
Kurt's combating um, most of. Good. So we're, we're, we're making a point of the fact that ACC and RTD provide surface parking, but not the fact that Arapahoe County and the city do also? And some of the restaurants and... Well, yeah, but I, we're talking large numbers here. I mean, I, presumably the idea of saying ACC and RTD provide a lot of their own is to say that, at least in theory, isn't going to spill over into the generally available parking throughout downtown. Really, the same thing goes for county and, and uh, the city building. That's a great point. You want to say ACC, RTD, the city, and the county provide large surface parking lots? Well, is there something that, that do we even have to include? Their parking needs. You can't park at ACC without getting a ticket. Sure you can. But RTD I do every time they have a street event in Main Street. So do several hundred other people. But you can't do it during the school day. Well, no, you can't. But it's not open to the public. Right. But, and that's why this, all I'm saying is if we're, going to, if we're going to make the effort of saying ACC and RTD provide surface parking for their needs, make the same comment about the county and the city. Why don't we delete it? Or delete it. Why do we need to put this here? Because people argue that RTD is not meeting their needs. Or if we're describing an existing situation, Tony's right. Make a point that, okay, if somebody's looking around and say, well, what about all this parking over here, ACC and RTD and the city and the county? The point is, it's there, but it's for it's their theirs. use. So I yeah. think Dennis's in, impulse of, of identifying it as being for their use is good. Let's just be a little more inclusive. So you propose, oh, Jenny? Um, I guess one of the other things with this first sentence is there's an ample supply of parking. It makes it, it sounds like there's no parking issue at all, and yet when we go into our comp plan, we address parking. And so I guess it, it, you could say it's sufficient, but that there's a need to plan long term. Um, but there's, we do have, we need to address parking, and so by just, we, so yeah. Yeah. It, it's the planning long term to, to basically reflect that back on what we have in our comp plan, the parking is needed. Well, what we're looking at here is the day. Yes. That, so, so sufficient, I think, would be a better use of a word than ample. Did anybody try and park downtown when the uh, auto show, the vintage auto show was on at ACC three weeks ago, two weeks ago? It was a zoo. It was a total zoo. We could, we could replace ample with older. Well, why do we even have to replace it with anything? Or we could just replace it with there is a supply yeah. of on street about, parking. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Or a limited <laughs> supply of on street parking, something. But I don't think we have to put an adjective in front of it. There is a supply of parking on, okay. on street and off. All those who agree with that sentence. <laughs> With ample gun? If you yeah. want, we could actually get into the numbers, too. I mean, we talked about numbers later. Uh, we could talk about how many spaces there are both on street and off street. So. You can put the amount in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 1123 or something. something like that, yeah. There are 1123 yes. public parking places available. And throughout the rest of it, about ACC and the city and the governor and, and all of that, and just say that's it. And, but the other question is, the word ample comes in, is here, and I personally don't feel it's ample. Well, and, and we quote, depends on the time. There are places, yeah, and we've been saying that for two and a half years now. There are places and times when it's ample, and there are other places and times where you want to pull your air out. So, I mean, I think that on the planning commission as a whole, in the future, the big picture, that we need to figure out some solution for these parking issues. Yeah, so, so I like what you said. Would it be... Good to say, although there is 1,172 parking spaces, based on um, feedback from the residents, that's generally not effective. Well, and, and we're it's saying that, and Linda's covered that in the notes from the outreach, from the, very, from the survey, from the open house, and all that sort of thing. You know, we, we, we want to be careful about how many times we reiterate the same thing. This is an appendice, an, an appendix. So all we're trying to say is the current situation is, yeah, there are 1123. Whether it's adequate or not, it's right. whether it's adequate or not is, isn't what we're discussing here. So right. this is facts. But right. the, I'll make a motion that we, under this parking issue, there's a, there is 1,100 plus uh, public parking places in downtown. Boom. And what I would probably do would be divide that into off street and on street and give these specific numbers. So. Okay. Yeah. 
Would you, could we also add the recent map that you guys did that identified what these 1,100 were? Sure. Just as a point of reference as well. Do you guys agree with the premise to add the map? I think, yes. I think okay. it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, so, Dennis, you're going to rewrite this. So we'll with... just get rid of the entire paragraph and just basically put in that, that sentence and then provide the map. Is that kind of where everybody's going? Yep. And this is how, how many other times does the map occur? <laughs> well, map, the, the whole idea of these little segments is that it's just a real capsule summary of what we have right now, right? So we've got about 1,100 public spaces plus some private off-street spaces. We don't have a parking structure. The big employers in the downtown area have parking lots, but they're for their own uses. That, that defines the parking situation in a, in a nutshell. That parking inventory is actually quite good, and, it, and it's an inventory, so it's an existing condition. I don't, it, do we have it somewhere else in the plan right now? The no. inventory mm -hmm. this one? No. I, I don't have a problem with adding that as an exhibit. So am I hearing, David, then do you think let's add that uh, first sentence in terms of how many spaces there are, and then a second sentence? I think Tony was on the right sentence. track. You know, just reword it so we're making it plain, and we're not trying to claim there's ample, because then it kind of undermines a future argument that we need to do something about it. But, David, I think I heard you say let's leave that last sentence. And just, and just to add the Arapahoe County and City, it's still important to, to show that they have parking, but it's for their own uses. Okay. So we end up with those two sentences. I mean, you might want to say their own uses, I'll except. My, I'll amend my uh, motion to uh, add the last sentence and add Arapahoe County and the City. Okay. And the map. And the map. And the map. Correct. And even though some people might think that they're not addressing their parking needs. Um, so all those in favor of that suggested language? Uh, seeing everyone, and what about there are no parking structures in downtown? Do we need to mention that? It's in there. It's in there. Okay. Stay. Yeah. All right. So we have six minutes left, and I thought we would talk. We could talk for a few minutes about the plan, and what we're going to do. Do you guys mind if we stop here and then talk about the plan and get some dates nailed down? Yes, no, maybe so. Um, could we, do you think we can finish this uh, Appendix A and get this yeah. done? Three minutes maybe? Yeah, yeah. just go Let's through it. it so we have this Appendix finished. I think we can, but do you mind if we talk for it first of some dates and some time frames and then approach to finishing up the comp plan so we'll be totally done? I'd rather just, I mean, we only have a couple of finish paragraphs left. Let's just finish this off and then let's just allow ourselves a little extra time to do that, Linda. Okay, so we are going to continue. So we're now at pedestrians. I move that we strike everything starting with perhaps. Okay, do you guys agree? This is a new paragraph from the no. original draft that I have. Are we ready to vote? Yes, and uh, so it's striking that everything after perhaps, including perhaps. Including perhaps. Mm -hmm. Wait, the only issue with that is it, it's kind of a major thing you've talked about in terms of, and maybe it's not written correctly, but, but you have talked about the fact that there are currently uh, gaps in the connection to the surrounding area. So you could certainly write that more cleanly. It, it, it's a major issue. We've wrestled with it for most of the last two years. My only problem with it is we're, we're taking the easy way out. I, I, somebody's going to have to define for me easy, inviting, obvious, and what you think is preventing it from being easy, inviting, and obvious, and what you think we can do about it. With a light rail station that's a one block diagonally away from Main Street, I mean, what are you going to do to make it easy, inviting, and obvious? But and I think we mentioned it in the goals, policies, and implementation strategy, so it's kind of duplicative here. Jenny? How about we say, um, let's see, okay. Connections between downtown and the surrounding areas, ACC and Main Street, and the light rail station and Main Street are important. I think we're getting beyond the existing conditions. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. You uh, either identify a problem. Okay. It's, not, it's not on the table yet. I mean, that's your future stuff. It just looks, we got 
Well, but this isn't no, saying actually, what we it, should. It's been on the table from the beginning. So we either acknowledge it. How about if we expand? I'm talking about this section. How about if we expand the first sentence so that it includes not just sidewalks, um, basically in downtown, but also those that are connected to the adjacent neighborhoods. So we say something, sidewalks in downtown and, and those uh, connecting to adjacent neighborhoods, service pedestrian connection route. Then the second sentence actually reflects that. Well, many of them are in good shape. There are gaps in the system. So that's what we want to talk about is the gaps in that larger system. Is that correct? <laughs> Could we try this in that sentence, change it to perhaps the more difficult issue to resolve is how to improve pedestrian connections between, et cetera, et cetera, I, without I, getting into the characterizations of easy and inviting and whatever? So aren't we, as I'm trying to deconstruct this sentence, and so the perhaps is subjective, right? So that's a statement that's very subjective or an opinion. And all we're trying to do here is talk about the facts. Is this a fact? There is, so if, if, it, if the sentence read, there is a lack of easy, inviting, and obvious pedestrian connections, is that what we're really trying to say and address? Well, I, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't because I, I, don't, I don't think that is self-evident. The, the uh, characterization of easy, inviting. How, how about a compromise and, and take what I think Karina was saying in terms of there is a, or the connections between downtown and surrounding neighborhoods and the library are. Need improvement. Need improvement. Well, that's, I think, um, again, we're going one step beyond maybe we are, are insufficient or something, something else that makes it more neutral but talks about the fact that they are, there aren't as many connections and they're not at the quality. I, but, you know. I, I understand your sentiment, Dennis, but uh -huh. this is a plan. We don't want to make it more convenient. We have to make it action-oriented. If we're going to avoid anything that's controversial or smacks of action, we've been wasting our time for three years. But, but it's referring to another effort here. The gaps in the network will be identified and addressed in the roads and pedestrian and not. And that's a future condition. It's not an existing condition. Well, well then we might as well strike the whole paragraph because we just said that about the sidewalks but, and the gaps on the sidewalks. Just make it real simple. There are not good pedestrian connections. And just make a real generic adjective, good. So there are not good connections between downtown, good or sufficient or something like that. Cut it off after narrow. That definitely defines that there's some good spots and some bad spots that need to be addressed. I don't know that we heard anything in the public outreach as far as specifics. What we heard was that connections from downtown to the outlying areas needed improvement. Okay, whether some people were pushing pedestrian access connections, some people were pushing bicycles, but there was no consensus on exactly what needed to be done. The consensus was you need to do something about the connections, especially as more and more activity occurs downtown. That's all we want to address here. I would. I would go back to the f first suggestion then, which was um, get rid of the last two sentences, perhaps, sorry with perhaps, and go up to the first sentence and just broaden it to say sidewalks throughout downtown and, and, and connecting to adjacent neighborhoods, service, pedestrian connection routes. Yeah. Then when we get to the second sentence, while many of the sidewalks are in good shape, there are gaps. So what we want to say is there are gaps in the system. Isn't that yep. what we want to say? That's Isn't right. that kind of the basic thing? Okay. So as long as we expand that first one to, to talk about yep. sidewalks beyond downtown, I think we may have done it. Is that? What do you guys? I and we're getting, we're past 9 o'clock. I, I think leaving out this, some version of this last sentence pulls the rug out from under most of what Jenny's been trying for more than a year to get us to commit to on South Curtis as a main pedestrian access between ACC and downtown. It's pulling the rug out from under the foundation out from under half the things we're trying to talk about under, under the uh, uh, circulation networks and connections throughout the rest of the comp plan. So let's just add that. So what Dennis was saying is sidewalks throughout the downtown and uh, surrounding areas or even if we want to specify these other areas serve as a pedestrian connection route while many of the sidewalks are in good shape. So if we include it in the first sentence, it's not just limiting it to that downtown. Does that address that? Well, I just in general, I, I don't want to delete that last, that last sentence with the perhaps more difficult issue. I, I don't mind deleting easy, inviting, and obvious, but keeping that sentence, we've got to keep those connections in front of us because those are, those are important. 
So substitute the need for improved pedestrian connections in place of lack of easy, inviting, and obvious. And we've said everything we're going to say as an intro to what we're talking about in the plan. Jenny, does that work for you? Yes. What was that word again, Dave? Actually, I think it was four. Now I've forgotten what they were. Uh, perhaps the more difficult issue to resolve is the need for for improved, that's three words, need for improved pedestrian connections. All right. All those in favor of that language? All right. That is Karina against. And so that carries. So we're past 9 o'clock. How do we want to proceed? We'll just finish it. Okay. Stop. Stop. I've been here since Step 6 o'clock. Five as written. So you can do it all right now. Four, five, six, C, D, E. Uh, with you, actually. <laughs> Any, anybody have any comments on four? No. Um, four is new. No, never mind. It's not. So. Let's just go one through, uh, through each of them. So four, we're all okay with four? Yeah. Oh, approve as is? Sure. Okay. Five. Five, any comments My only on comment on five is where are we going to say something? I mean, the, the, the vehicles and all that, the network is fine. The uh, network operates well. My, my advice would be to say something to the effect that though directional signage guiding visitors could stand improvement, which is something else we've been saying for two and a half years. But that would be... Well, it's part of vehicular circulation. You can't circulate if you don't know where you're going. And unless we have it in here someplace else and directly tied to circulation. So could we just say signage needs improvement at the end? Yeah, uh, just something referring to that directional signage. Do you guys all agree with that? Yes. Despite Charlie's insistence that he has signs up all over the place, nobody ever sees them. All right, so with the addition, all those in favor of the... Um, Vehicles, <laughs> unanimous. Economic development. Take out the last part of on stats and take it as is. That was Kurt's, Kurt's so question. Just a suggestion. Or yeah. A question: Are there any stats to back this up? And there are. We could certainly insert some if you. If hey, would you guys be in favor <laughs> of ins um, adding some statistics in this? Yeah, the, the only thing I think that's missing here is we've talked a lot, especially with, with Chris, although we did it at arm's length <laughs> rather than face-to-face, -face, about how the different elements contribute to generating that economic activity, about residential density, daytime use, evening use, all that sort of thing is what's necessary to generate a healthy economy, and, and we, we don't address it here. We don't even allude to it here. And I think that was, that was an important lesson we learned in trying to reconcile the comments we got from public outreach on you need more chain stores, you need more independent stores, you need more cheaper stores, you need more residences, you need more restaurants. We came to recognize that there is a synergy there that, has to, has, that we have to help create or at least make sure we're not impeding. And this doesn't even allude to it. it it's is more than just economic gardening. Yeah, I tend to agree with you, David. I think there's um, there's probably room for improvement on this one. Um, I, I don't have any suggestions, but I do support your concern. Dennis, do you catch the drift of what I'm saying as far as how the elements work together mm -hmm. back and forth? Mm -hmm. Is that something, if we agreed to it, you could incorporate it? Yeah, mm -hmm. get some language. And is it appropriate to include in this section here? I mean, and how does it relate to the goals and policies? I, th I think we're asking to expand what economic development means. This feels very narrow. Okay, all those in favor of expanding this section? What? Just to include the fact that there are more elements than just keeping a business or a, or, or a group of businesses healthy. There are other act you, downtown business. The business, hoodlum has been saying for years they don't want to stay open after hours because there's nobody downtown to shop, and nobody comes downtown to shop because the stores aren't open. So it's got to go back and forth, and it isn't going to happen overnight. We need at some point to recognize and bring it to the community's attention that you have to have all this stuff working together, and it isn't going to happen overnight. Okay. So all those in favor of adding some language to economic development, seeing Kurt against. 
Um, so then, do, then um, Dennis, you'll rewrite the section and bring it back to us. Okay. Does that work for everybody? Okay. Historic preservation. Any comments, could, Dave? Could we? You're going to have to do some wordsmithing, but I presume we'll edit some of the verb tenses and that sort of thing. I, I guess I'd like to change historic landmarks to historic structures or properties or something. But everything we're re reusing downtown is not a landmark. So change it to properties. So the proposal is to change historic landmarks to historic properties. <coughs> and did you want to change the city has a historic preservation program that identifies individual landmarks and change it to properties or? No. Well, no, in that case, it is a landmark. That is a landmark. So why don't you just keep both landmark and property so it applies to one or the other as appropriate? Scratch and landmarks, add properties and, mm -hmm. properties. and properties. Okay. And properties? In that case, let's capitalize landmarks so we make sure we're tying it directly to what the HPB is designated. All right, so the proposal is to add uh, landmarks and properties, capitalize landmarks, and with that, are we ready to vote? Do you want me to check with the historic preservation people and see if that's correct use of terms? Because they're very careful with the terminology. Yeah, we should. Yes, okay. please. Mm -hmm. And that language with uh, Dennis going to HPV to check with the language. All those in favor? Is everyone? And that takes us to Parks, Trails, Open Space. Christmas tree one? Oh, uh, we asked uh, David uh, Flake, who is the our, our parks guy. He said it's not officially a park. He said we kind of think about it that way, but he said officially it's really not. So he was more comfortable not calling it a park, but rather referring to it however we referred to it in here. So uh, just um, as long as somewhere down the road when somebody says, we need to have a little mini urban park down near the right. west end of the street, somebody points out we have a little mini park. Can we just call it green space? Open space, public Open space. space. Something like that. <coughs> we don't want to call it a park. No, we could just go with two parks then. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I apologize. I thought I had that language stuck in here, Matt, somewhere that in terms of reference to that I will find it. So, okay. Any, any changes to that section? Not a... Okay, all those in favor of the entire parks, trails, and public space? That is uh, everybody but Dave. And that finishes our Appendix A. And so how do we want to proceed from here? We have to review the exec, we have to rewrite the executive summary to, and then review it and approve it. We've got the downtown's future. We've got the process, the public outreach, and then the whole document coming back to us to approve for graphic design. And we originally scheduled that for a 7-Eleven. And Dennis, we have. And, and it's looking like just talking to Kelly and, and, and to Chris, it, it, yeah, that schedule is a little bit more unpredictable in terms of what their turnaround time is going to be because of the other commitments. Um, just, they couldn't schedule for us because it's such a busy time of year, unfortunately, but they'll try and get it done as quickly as possible. So we, there may be a little bit of a delay in there, unfortunately. But, but we can commit to having it done by then. Right. What, what we want to have done is... All if, we can control is what we can control. Exactly. We have, we have the text as you want it, and then we turn it over to Kelly. Kelly then will edit it. Kelly then, once it's edited, gives it to Chris because it, Chris needs to have it in his final format as possible. He's starting to work now on the formatting itself in terms of what that looks like and how he plugs it in, and he's finding photographs and doing all those things in addition. Um, but he won't know what the final is. And once he's got it in his format, we can't go back easily and, and, and edit. So we want to get, make sure that the text is correct before we do the, the actual so uh, we, graphic work. 
we originally said that we wanted to get approved today everything and then and then have the entire draft come back to us on uh, the 7th of July and then on the 11th we were going to approve to, or on July 11th we're going to approve to send to graphic design and for editing so it seems like our time frames have changed do we need to use the next meeting uh, to finish up all of our comments and um, and then get them back to Dennis. Is it possible yep. to have one in between and to continue to have uh, holidays, holidays next week. Yeah, holidays. week from today is Fourth of July. So are we? So what's left is the executive summary. Uh, yeah, that has to be Dennis was going to rewrite it. I wrote that. And Although I already see revisions on here, but this isn't your rewriting. This is it's, okay. Yeah, it's partial, but not yeah, okay. not complete. So. And then Appendix B through E. Mm -hmm. And then we, we want to see the whole document again because we've made so many changes that we, there may be some issues that we have with the whole document. Right. We've really made a lot of changes. <laughs> so, well, no, no, one question, Dennis. If we give this to, to Kelly and Chris mm -hmm. and they make their changes, then we're pretty much stuck with what they come out with, right? Yeah, I, I think so until we actually, the thought is we'd like to have that go all the way through the process so that the planning commission sees that it's public hearing, then you put together a memo of, of changes you, after your public hearing, you would recommend to that document <coughs> or that you're amending it, you're adopting it with these changes. Um, the alternative to that is to go back, it takes more time, it's gonna delay it if we go back and have them incorporate those changes into the, uh, another draft that they then take on to city council so you, you can we could do it either way uh, the faster way is to have the same draft document go forward and in some ways I think that um, is is more comfortable for a lot of people because they're seeing the same document going through the entire process rather than having to, uh, to review it one time and then review it a second time uh, when it comes out before city council I mean, it's a trade-off to some degree because some other people would prefer to see the final document as it's being proposed by city uh, by planning commission. In, um, in either way, yeah, the, the more we can get it finalized before we give it to Kelly, the better off we are. And I thought we had kind of sort of agreed by consensus at the last meeting that we were going to um, pull the document together, get the get that summary of all the comments from the public hearing, and attach it to the draft that we have. Right. And then uh, yeah, just just speaking on experience for the last well, when do we first start seeing the framework and everything else we've gone through 12 or more copies of that mm -hmm. trying to keep track of what was changed from the last one which comments got incorporated which didn't if it's been difficult for us it'd be difficult for the public and city council to follow as well so if we take the same document attach our recommended revisions to it because we will get recommended or required revisions from city council and then incorporate all the changes in one final document where all, everybody in the community is going to be happier well and also what we're not seeing is the photos the captions the tables I mean we haven't seen any of that and it could be that we don't want to approve some of that stuff can we, can we just get to July 11th okay. <laughs> and agree to, yeah, see where uh, we are. <laughs> agree to try to get the executive summary signed off on and um, the rest of the appendix? So basically you approve the entire document. Okay. Well, to some degree, I think then even after you do that, you're going to want to see it one more time right. to mm -hmm. make sure that we've gotten it correct, uh, the changes that, that you want us to make that we've got them in there. As so then, then will that take us to the next meeting in July? What 25th. Date is it? July 25th. Yeah. Now, when you say we got to see the next changes, can we can we see the next changes and have and go through the? I mean, I mean, can we basically have the document that we can review each of the the changes so that we don't have to have another right. meeting to? Uh, we, we could do everything except, uh, I guess I'm not following. We, we could, um, by the 11th, we could have, the all, have all the changes that we've made to date. Right, um, right, I think it's, right. And I think we're pre in pretty good shape with that because all we have left is the executive summary and the appendices. And I think our concern more when we, when we wanted to be complete was to make sure that all those interrelated parts were, were 
you know, together. So if you were looking for something, you could find it one place or another. Um, because the appendices are a little distinct from that, I think we're probably safe trying to do that, trying to get that to you. And, and if we could treat it like the documents before a regular hearing on an application and get it like Thursday, yes. either by, you know, physically or by email. You bet. What's the date on that Thursday um, before is that? It is. It's before the 11th. It would be, uh, it'd be the 7th. 17th or 7th? 7th. So technically we could have we could have a draft that we've looked at and approved um, because, I mean, any comments that we make on the appendix, I'm imagining shouldn't be too involved, and especially, and I, it shouldn't be. I, I mean, it really, so at this point, um, I mean, I, I would hope that we could go through and and, and have it I, well I wouldn't done. imagine we'd find anything in the appendix we want to put in the document itself. For example, so I think right. that we've got two kind of standalone documents. Hopefully, yeah, I, I'd be a little surprised if we found something in the appendix that we thought we really need to put that in the plan. So uh, could we get the revisions and approve the main draft mm -hmm. the next? And then meeting? possibly send that on to Kelly. When get that started with Kelly at that point, if you can sign that off at that point, she'd then have a heads up at the end, starting with it. So, so Jenny, you're saying the revisions for the entire document today, everything that we've it's changed today. in the goals and the policies and implementation and get that by the 7th mm -hmm. then, so that we can comment on the 11th. So then we can approve the main body of the, the comp plan so that we can have it edited for sure and then get through the appendix. I mean, basically, we've done all the edits, so it should be straightforward. I would like a hard copy of that. Okay. We've done the edits on what we've covered today. We haven't done the edits on the rest of it. So the question is, rather than wait until we get the updated version, hmm. could we send back to Dennis comments, specific comments or specific changes proposed for the things that we haven't talked about specifically so, so that that night we're the, ready to go right the through appendices, The appendices. Sure. That, that would be what the... Again, the remaining of app um, appendix The executive items. summary and forward and the appendices after Appendix A. Well, the so, executive summary is we, we went through and it's going to right. come back to us right. with the changes that we recommended. Well, but th there's more than... Was it only the executive no, no. summary, that one? Yes. That yeah. was it. That was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot more so I think this. there's just it's the it's appendix it. left now. Okay. Right. Until we get the revised executive summary make, to make sure we're okay with it. <coughs> So, Dennis, you're going to then provide us with the entire document the way it is by the 7th mm -hmm. and for the intent of us to approve the main body on July 11th and then approve the appendices also on July 11th and then we'll have the document in full come back to us on the 25th to send to editing and graphic design. Mm -hmm. Or we, we can but even we can, start, we can the start initial sending the initial. Yeah. We can start sending Graphic. it up to Kelly, and I don't know how it's going to work best for her if she wants to see the entire thing. I think she'll have to look at it and kind of figure out what it is before she knows that. Uh, but I would anticipate that she could, because the plan is kind of standalone, she could look at it first. Okay, so is everybody comfortable with that? So we've got a plan. Um, real quick, um, a couple of things that I had on uh, follow-up items that we didn't really talk about is uh, the City Council comments regarding the comp plan that we didn't talk about in the annual work session and then to discuss the annual work plan that you you were going to put together a draft for, for that at some point so those are just a couple agenda items because it looks like we're on July 25th we might have a, a open meeting kind of <laughs> and we do have we do have a draft for that we put together so based on what the comments that you put together right I mean, hopefully that'll be like very quick approval. So, any other things before we adjourn? Okay, motion to adjourn. Um, who? Okay. So, and we got a second. And all those in favor? Okay. Bye.